Hello, my name is Bob Sutton and welcome to Extreme Pancras. We're going to do takedowns and fighting combination. Finishing holds, punches, submissions, everything you're going to need to win a fight. This is Matt, he's going to help me out. And Brian, he's going to help me out. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to do takedowns. Um, I'm not a takedown specialist, everybody knows. But the takedowns I do, they work. They're simple, and because they're simple, even I can do it. Okay, number one, this one I like a lot. You control it a lot with your head. Watch what I do. I'm going in here, and I'm going to push my head to the side. To the side and up, actually. I'm going to push to the side, and I'm going to stand up with my legs. So see what happens. I put a little bit body weight of him up. So instead of being 180 pounds, suddenly it's maybe 60 pounds. It's going to make it much easier for me. So I'm going to do, my legs are going to do the work together with my neck. I'm pushing him to the side and I'm going to stand up. So his body is going that side up. Okay, now I'm going to grab his, the back of his leg right here. This is the best grip you can do. And you're going to, once I'm going to get up and get his weight up, I'm going to push his legs to the side. Watch this. First of all, I'm going to do slow motion. I'm going to shoot him. I'm going to stand up to that side. Make sure I'm not doing this because he's going to front choke me. So keep it up. Look there. Grab here. And once I'm standing up, you bring him to the side. And he will take it. If you do it right, and you use your legs, you can do this like 100 times in a row. You're not going to get tired. If you're not pushing him up, and he's just standing there, so stay firm on the ground. I can do whatever I want. I cannot get him from his place. So I have to lift him up, diagonal up, there. One more time, I'm standing, I'm gonna run in, I go here, I'm gonna stand up, and make sure his foot is not touching his leg. Sometimes you make a mistake by doing this. That ain't so bad, because there's a really good right leg lock right here. So it ain't that bad, but if you wanna go for a side position, you want to make sure both legs are going in front of your legs. One more time. Stand. Go down. Go down. Go up there. And grab his legs and push him to this side. And put him down. The number two takedown, again, real easy one. This is like when you're on this distance. I'm gonna hold his elbow. You don't have to lift it because it's not gonna work properly. He holds it down. But I'm just gonna hold it so you're not gonna cut yourself by accident on his elbow. I'm just gonna pass and go climb on the back. This is what I'm doing. One, slide in here, grip tight. I'm gonna stretch this leg. And I'm just gonna rotate to the right. Real easy. Body weight is doing the work. I'm not doing anything. I just let myself drop and I twist to the right. One more time. He's standing. You go one grip. Don't don't lose that grip. That's really important. Twist your hip and you just trip him. Let him trip over your right leg. That's stretched. One. Climb on the side. One more time. Just watch the elbows. Nothing's gonna happen, but you never know. You don't want to lose a fight because you get cut or something, you know? That's the bad way to lose, especially when you're winning the fight. Go, get under, grab, stretch your right leg, and just twist your body. Right, climb on top of him, of course. Never be in this position. Always sprawl out, legs out, so you're in control. <laughs> The next one is called the slam bam. Thank you, ma'am. That's why I call it. And it's a good one. Watch this. We all did this trick. I used to do it with uh, the teachers at school. Fine. And he's going to drop. <laughs> this principle we're going to use. Thank you very much, Matt. Yeah, thank you. 
This principle we're going to use, but instead of having somebody behind him, I'm going to hold his legs. Watch what I do. I'm going forward. I'm going to step forward. I step with my right leg next to his left leg, next to it. I'm going to pass him. I'm going to put my hand on my head on his stomach, like this. And instead of having somebody here, I just hold here. My hands are not going to move. They stay in the same position. The only thing what I do is drop my body. Normally I will run this in and then the speed and body weight will do the trick. But now you see in slow-mo, I only go to the side. Go to the side and climb on the side of him. Step next to him. Put your head on his belly. Hold his legs. Just keep him in the same position. You don't have to pull. Don't do anything. And just drop down. Next take down. Going forward. I don't want to put my head here now. He's going for a guillotine. I'm going to put it in front of him like this. Step. I'm going to hook with this leg, and I'm just going to take him down. It's real simple. Look. One, two, take down. So I'm going down. I put my head, the side of the head, the front. It doesn't really matter. On his chest. I'm going to hook with my right leg. I'm going to hook backwards here. I'm going to control his hips. I'm going to make sure this leg cannot step backwards. Because when I just take him down like this, he will hop backwards on that leg. So you have to stop that leg too. So we go down, one, grab, and go forward. Now, if you don't have years of experiences to, for takedowns, like wrestlers, college wrestlers, it's better to set it up with punching. You know, distract him and then take him down. Like a real good wrestler, he will take you down on will. So, they don't need it. But we know that we're going to need it. Best thing to do is to punch. I always think like a left, right, left, straight punch is the most easy thing to do. Because it brings you in a perfect position. Boom, 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 and then you're going to take him down. Let's see how all these takedowns look with some punching before. Okay, we're going to do some combinations right now. We're finishing combinations. I'm in a bad position. Matt's going to guillotine choke me. It's not that bad. You can use it. Some people are really persistent. When, once he got me, he's going to hold me. I'm going to take him down, but still he's going to hold me. But that's exactly what I want. Uh, let me see if I think from this side it's going to be the best. So he's got me in the guillotine. Okay, the thing to do now in the guillotine is step to the side because when he's smart, he's going to drop backwards and he's going to put the hooks in. That's going to be dangerous for me. 
So get to the side and go low. Now you can lift him up. You put him down. Once he's on the ground, he got still the thing going on. This is exactly what you want. See what I do? I create space by pushing myself here. I'm gonna push his hand and I'm gonna finish with a figure four. So one more time, he's guillotine choked me. I'm going to the side. When he's gonna drop backwards and he's gonna put the hooks in, it's not good for me. So you wanna avoid that. Go to the side, bend your legs, pick him up. Most of the people will hold you. They will try to hold you because they think they got a hold right there. They don't. Once you're to the side, they cannot do anything with you anymore. But because they keep on holding you, it's gonna be easy for you to figure for them. Do it again. I'm going, I'm hanging in. Not a good position. Go lower yourself and go to the side. Go under, lift him up, put him down. Now he's here. Go to the side, grab his wrist, and push as hard as you can. Slip and make gamma. Normally, you will get all the way here and make it tight. But it's a little tight right here, so I be easy on it. That's why I don't do it, but you have to do it. Okay, this time he's going to do exactly the same thing, but he's going to fall backwards and he's going to try to put the hooks on. Uh, I have to make sure that I, before he secures his hooks, that I jump out and I go to the side. Nothing will happen as long as you control his legs and you jump to the side, you're in the same position where we ended up in the one before this. I will show you. He's got the choke and now he wants to drop backwards. I go to the side and I'm here. He cannot do anything right now. Slide over. Push, grab, and got it. Okay, this time, I'm gonna shoot in. He's gonna grab my throat. He's put the guillotine on, and then he's gonna drop backwards. That's what a lot of people will do, probably. They're gonna drop backwards, and they put the hooks around, and then they choke you. Make sure he cannot put the hooks on. Before he fall, drops backwards, I'm gonna hold his legs, and I jump to the side. So we're gonna end up in the same position as we ended with the technique before. I show you. He's got this. He wants to look backwards. I'm going to the side. Once I'm to the side, I'm going to do the same thing. One grab, and I'm going to finish it. So here we go again. He's got it. He's going to try to drop backwards. I'm going to draw, and I go to the side. I'm going to slide under, I grab his wrist, and I finish. You remember the escape from the armbar? If not, buy the Siri. You didn't saw it, buy it. We're gonna do it now, and we're gonna counterattack it right away. Why? Because when I roll out, he will be totally off guard at that moment. And you have to use that little moment to attack him. Watch. He's gonna lay down, he's gonna go for the armbar. I'm gonna escape, I'm gonna turn, grab his leg, step over, and go for me. Okay, here we go again. We turn out, turn, grab the left, step up, we're gonna slam in, step in, keep on, make the knee bar. This one is the same thing, it's the same attack. We're gonna escape different. He's gonna figure for me, we're gonna escape, and we go again for a knee bar. He's off guard, at the moment you escape, he will still, with his mind, with you escaping, he cannot believe it. Once you're out, he thinks what, boom, that's the right moment. You wanna catch the leg there, and put a knee bar on. Okay, he's got to choke. You have to go fast now, because otherwise he's gonna choke you out. Okay, I'm going up, up, 
put my knee on his jaw, pull myself out. You see, here you got the leg. Step it in and make the knee bar. When this happens, his hand is here, it makes it better. It makes it more tight, so don't worry about it. This knee bar is tighter than one without the arm. Here we go again. Figure four. Okay, go to the side. You see what I do first? I put this arm here, because otherwise he's gonna swing it over and he's gonna pull my neck. And I'm gonna tap, so I'm gonna make sure he cannot do it by this. Holding there, watch out over an arm bar, straight arm bar. So you wanna do this, you see? You have this elbow bent, you have your arm bent. Now nothing can happen, see it's pretty tight like this. And I have to move, you don't wanna stick here, you wanna get out. One, two, three, push yourself out, hold this leg, step in, and make the knee bar. Okay, a nice combination is this too. You remember the neck crank? We had on the neck crank and choke tape. We're gonna start like this. One, two. This was the neck crank we had. This was the perfect position to do anything with him would we like. Boom, we can smack the hell out of him. Grab the leg, keep it tight, concentrate yourself on his toes. I told you in the leg lock tape that it's a toe hold. Watch what happens when I'm gonna do it wrong. I'm gonna do this, when I grab this, he's gonna stretch his other leg. Up, I'm gonna lose the control. Watch when I do it right. I'm gonna do this. Now try to stretch your legs. He's not gonna stretch because when he stretch, he's locking himself up right here. So you have to grab his toes to the left. Pull him to the left. It's the only right way. You don't do it like this, he's gonna escape. Okay? Grab it, slide up. So they are the same length, the same direction, and then twist your body. Rotate your body, your whole body, to the left, like this. One more time. We're sitting in this position. We saw this position from the neck crank tape. First, you can distract him a little bit. You can elbow him, whatever you want. You grab here. Now you're gonna concentrate. You're gonna visualize what you're gonna do. So everything is gonna go smooth when you do it. I look, I go in one time, pull it down. Slide it up, twist. Same thing, same position. We're not going for the toe hold, we're going for a straight knee bar. You're gonna catch his arm in between the leg again, like we had before, but it makes it tighter, so it's better. One, two. You know this all? Do it right from the neck crank tape. Punch, punch, grab the leg. Everything, you're gonna let everything go, and you're gonna step with your left leg in between his legs. When his legs are like this, you just open them up. You make it a little bit more easy for yourself. So, stand up, keep low, keep your ass low, step in, and make the knee bar. Okay, watch closely now. I do the neck crank. You have to understand that total, the whole time that I'm busy here, the neck crank is on. When he's a little tired, he probably will tap already. You know, because it's very difficult for him to breathe like this. So I got the thing going on, just step in, and I'm beating him, I'm beating him, and constantly putting pressure on his head. So he takes his mind off of his leg. That's why you can grab his leg. Once you got his leg, you're gonna let everything go. You open it up a little bit just to make it more easy for yourself. You're gonna step in there, in between. One, two, three, four. 
you see, I got his hand here, so it's more pressure on his leg. I'm going to extend, put my hips out, and my shoulders backwards. Remember the takedown we had, takedown number four from the same tape. I'm going to shoot in, I'm going to take him down, and immediately I'm going to apply a knee bar on him. Slow motion first. I'm going in. I grab, I'm going to put this hook in here. I'm going to put him down. Now, watch what I do. I slide my foot up all the way till the end. Now I put the other foot there. I cross my feet, and I'm going to bridge. When I bridge, it will hurt him. But sometimes when they get real strong legs, you want to bear hug him. You want to do this, and then you get a lot of power. Now, normally when you would bridge, you would come up. You know, it's when you hold yourself down here, and then you get a lot of power. So grab around and power him. You see that my feet are touching his feet. The leverage is real high. When my feet would be here, and my knee would be here, I don't have any power. I want to be all the way, like here. It's the same as an armbar. When I have an armbar and I pull somebody here, or I pull him here, you know, this is going to work. Here, there's no way you're going to stretch the arm. Same thing right here. Here we go again. We need total control, constantly. So you take him down, you slide all the way to the bottom, here to his heel. You make sure that your crotch is here, just above his knee, not on, just above it. Again, same as an armbar. You don't want to have here the thing, you want to have here the crotch. Yeah, same with this. So it's a knee bar, arm bar, it's the same technique. I'm going, one, grab, put the hook in, take him down, slide, now I got it. I want to make it more time, go under him, bear hug him, and let's head. Okay, this position is a common position. You're going to turn your opponent now. We're going to turn him. And most of the people, they keep on holding your head real tight because he's got it now right tight, tight, and he's going to keep it tight. Okay, this is what you do. Climb onto him, and we're going to turn him over. One, he's holding me. Watch what I do. I cross face him. Because when I cross face him this side, he cannot turn this side. That's what you want to do. One, two, step over, and make an armbar. Okay, so in this position, make sure he's not going to catch your arm like that. You keep it around or hook it already. That's always the safest thing, safest thing to do. Okay, I'm going to climb up to him like this, all the way here. And I'm going to bridge there. Oh, he's going to turn. I'm going to cross face. One, two, and I'm going to put my foot in the place where the hand is. One, two, three. I don't have to throw this leg over like I did before, but you can. No problem, but it's also right to do it like this. This is very common. This is like when you train every day, um, once a week, at least once a week, you're going to do this, this lock on somebody. There's always somebody doing this. Okay, when you want to really want to know how to turn and bring him over, you have to go to the turn tape. You know, it turns and uh, improve him for your positions. Let's go. One, two, three. Wait.
Okay, we all know this position, huh? We're sitting here and he's holding his hands, okay. Now if you just don't want to break this thing, like the way I told you, or like a couple of ways to do it, you can also go for knee bars, it's just a funny thing to know. Hopefully backwards, go grab, step in, and make a knee bar. Make sure everything is tight, you put your knees together, squeeze so he cannot escape. When I go there, make sure you put pressure to the right, otherwise he's gonna push off and he's gonna escape. One, see what I do? I put pressure there, grab the leg, step over, and go for the knee bar. I'm gonna take Matt down again. Once he's on the ground, I'm gonna react. I'm gonna move. He's from his, he's interrupted, you know. I mean, I took the guy down. He's still with that takedown, probably. Beat him up a little bit, and we're going for a leg smash. There's a slow move I'm going in. We had this takedown early on the table. Grab, takedown. Boom. Once he's on the ground, sit up, smash, hit a few times, bring the leg over, and now I'm gonna step with my right foot over him to this side. I'm gonna do or this way rock, and when that's not gonna work because sometimes they don't feel it, you're gonna slide over and you're gonna make your heel holes. You press your feet together. Yeah, all the details you can learn on the leg lock tape. Press your feet together and go for the heel hold. One more time, take down. Take down number four, for in case you didn't know. Step in, grab. Move, move, go to this position. Grab the leg, slide up, and lean forward. Put all your weight forward, it's really important here. Hit him a few times, because you distract him this way. Then you're gonna bridge. I'm gonna lean backwards, but you see my power is still on his leg. When I would do this, he's gonna stretch, whoop, and I'm gonna lose my balance. You don't have that, you wanna sit here. I'm gonna put pressure. So get on him, bring him to the side. Control him, you can still hit him a few times. Bring your leg over. Press your knees together, put your feet together, and twist. And otherwise, go for this one. Next one. Nice. The slam bam, thank you, man. Take down. Punch, punch, punch. Go past him. Oh, he's on the ground. Start hitting him, hitting him, hitting him. Most of the time, the people crawl on their hands and knees. It's exactly what you want. I'm going to climb on top. I'm going to put my hands in here and I'm going to grab his wrist. What I'm going to do is one, I grab his wrist and I stretch him out. Now I'm going to punish him. Boom, boom, hitting. Go for a choke, you got the choke on, or you let him go, punch, 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 cross face him to the side, and turn up, and make a cross face. Here we go again, punch, camouflage your takedown, take him down, in the takedown you had, earlier on the tape, sprawl out, start hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, hitting him, he will turn over. What most people do, keep hitting him, because otherwise you will know right away you're gonna 
go in the back and step in. Up. I go up, put the hooks in, I slide in, and I grab his wrist. This we had also on the other tape, eh? Sprawl out. Put your feet together here. Really important, otherwise you can escape, baby. And just start beating him up. Beating him on the back of the head and follow stripes. This, they, they will have the most impact. More impact than with a fist. Power strike him, go under, go for the choke, or if you want to finish it different, palm strike, go for cross face, jump over, and cross face. Neck cranking. Clinch situation. You're fighting somebody who is a striker and he got you. You don't want to take him down. You want to clinch, but you want to take him down. Watch. You get me by the neck and he's kneeing me. You block the knees. This is the most easy way to block a knee. Make it close so he cannot develop any speed. You don't want to block the knee at the end of his way, you know, because there he develops the most speed. Same with the punch. You don't want to hit him like this. You want to hit him at the end. So when you block, his leg all the way here, when you put your hands here, it's really easy for your knees. See, there's no power in that. And then when he gives another knee, the left one, we're gonna slide him up and catch it. We got here, now we lift him up, and maybe you need your foot a little bit to do this. Oh, take him down. You see, you got his leg here. This is perfect for a knee bar. One, two, slap. We got the knee bar. When somebody is really flexible with the knee bar, you can put it under your armpit, but control the knee. Don't do this because he's going to roll out. Control, get it, and then extend. So we're going to wait for his knees. We're going to wait until he makes a left knee. Maybe when he starts with left and you don't catch the first one, what Thai boxers do, strikers do, they often they do right, bam, right. They have a pattern. And you, when, you can use that against him, of course, when he does left. Right, boom, the left one I'm gonna grab. Okay, I block, like this, when the knee comes here, I block, whoop, like that. You see, he shoves off, whoop, he shows that. The other one, with left, I block, but I don't use this hand, so it slides up and I catch it. It looks strange, but trust me, you can catch it real easy. Okay, here we go. He's giving the knees. One, two, you pass it. Lift him up. Most of the time, this is enough. You don't need this foot. Slam him down. When you throw him down hard, he will be hurt. That moment, that millisecond, you're going to use the knee bar on.
This one we got under choke tape, this position. Okay, we're controlling him by holding his arms right here and pushing this down hard in his thighs so he can't turn. I'm gonna catch this arm, watch. Boys, I catch it. I hit him, hit him, hit him. Now I'm gonna cross face him and I'm gonna post. One, two, and I go for an armbar. Okay, we got the control here. Good control. I'm gonna catch the arm. One, two, hit, hit, hit. You wanna distract him. The back of the head, where he doesn't see the punch, it's gonna hurt him. He's gonna be dizzy. That's the moment where you wanna have. And look what I got here. One, I hit. I got this arm, step to the side, cross face, go over and make an armbar. Okay, we know, we remember this escape. Go under, put your hand here, and then you're gonna pull yourself out. Stretch your legs, push his body, pull yourself out, turn, go for the neck, right? Punch him a few times, twist him over, and go for the total neck, right? <coughs> so here we go again. Watch what I do with this hand. If I'm gonna do it like this, he feels I'm going to put my hand on it. He knows I'm going to escape. So make sure he's not feeling it. You can do that by turning on your side, and then make sure you don't touch anything, slide under. Once the arm is here, don't hold him, because again, then he knows something's going on. Simply hold it there in the middle. Use it at the moment you're going to escape. One, two, escape, climb on top, cross face. Hit, 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 create some space. We're going to neck crank him this side, see what I did, put my right foot backwards, like one, two, and then that way. Perfect setup for an armbar. Neck cranking. Okay, you have to make sure that your legs, your knees are close to his body because otherwise he's gonna put his arms, he's gonna try to put them under here. Both of them, both of them that is, because if he does only one, you're gonna triangle choke him, of course. But if he's smart, he's gonna put both arms in. You can do anything then, he can bridge you off and you're gonna lose the position. So make sure when you crawl up that his arms are here. See, this is it, like this. Coming up, up, up. Once I'm here, I'm gonna put my foot out, like that. Now I can grab his tricep and sit higher and do this. Trust me, you can be in this position. Now I can neck crank him and he's gonna tap or he's gonna push me off. He's gonna try. <laughs> Probably he will push this is what he's going to do. Okay, once you go there, one, and now we're gonna swim over, two, and we go for an armbar. Combination neck crank armbar. Take your time with this. Don't rush it because you're gonna lose the position if you do. Go ahead, grab his neck, climb up. Make sure everything is tight. You see, hold the elbow, go forward. Hold his neck constantly. Grab it up 
That's it. Stretch. He's gonna push you off. He's gonna try to push me off. Or he's gonna tap. This is exactly what you want. See? Grab in the middle. Now this hand is going down. This hand stays here. Watch what I do. It stays here until I apply the armor. You can mount somebody in different ways, you know. I like the high mount. Sit really high on his chest because he can do a lot. From here he can bridge. It's difficult for me to punch. The higher I sit, the less he can bridge. Understand? Because his shoulders are here. There's no way that he can bridge this high. And at this point, he can. See, when I sit here, it's real easy. He can bridge whatever he wants. Nothing's going to happen. And I can punch, do whatever I like with him. Also, once he's here, I can grab, you know? And we start. One, two. Take your time. Slide in. Take your time. Whoop. Okay, now we got this. Watch what I do. I keep my left hand here, contact with his head, twist, and then I slide over. Another one, nice combination. I'm gonna grab his head. This is when you're busy with a striker. You want the knee, always want to knee the head, never knee the body. Because even when he's a striker, a knee to the body he can take. And once he takes it, he can grab your leg. And when you knee him to the head, he has to defend his head. There's no way he can take a knee to the head and then grab your leg. So it's really important. See, when I do this, he will take it to his body, take the whoop, and grab my leg. You see, and that's a bad position. You don't want to have that. At the other end, I make a little, I, I make sure that my distance is pretty big, far away from him, and I got a good control. I'm pushing him down constantly, so even when he wants to shoot, I just drop my elbows holding his body. Now I start kneeing him in the head. He has to block the knees in the head. I distract him a little bit. Wham, wham. Now I'm gonna push, I'm gonna slide in and lock my hands. Lock them tight. When you don't lock them tight, he will escape. You lock them like that, he will escape. This is the only way, the only way to do it. Now you can see, he has no defense. So whatever you, you can knee him, wang, he cannot stop it. You see, he can put his hand there, but he cannot really block it. Okay, watch what I do. Let's put my right foot in front, left backwards, and I'm gonna turn him to the left. Whoop, like this. I bring his body real close to the ground. You see, I don't wanna have this, because when he's gonna sit up now, I'm gonna lose the control. Keep his body real low. My ass stays low, and I'm gonna put my foot there. If I don't put my foot there, and he's gonna bridge backwards now, bridge bow, I will lose my control. I still got my hat, thank God, where I can bridge with. But you don't wanna have that, you wanna finish him. You finish him like this, and now I lean backwards. Pay attention, it's the small details, the little details that make the whole thing. Grab the hat, and lean. Backwards. You don't want to stand here. You know, he's going to take you down right away. Lean backwards and knee the head. I told you why. Knee to the head. Knee to the head. Even when he tries to shoot on me, I jump, I go low. You see, I'm still in control. Keep on kneeing the head so his mind is there. Then you push him a little down and you slide in like this. Up and you grab. You make this real tight. As tight as you can. You catch his neck, his head. Everything is really tight. Put my right foot at the front my left backwards, and now I'm gonna twist him, whoop, to this side. See how low I am? You need this, be low. This is my bridge right now, but you wanna finish it. Whoop, slip, and now lean backwards. Look at my grip, I just, I'm around his neck. Don't do this, you know you have no good control. You wanna do this, this makes it more tight. Look what I do, I can twist him, now, only with my arms, just by moving his neck. 
With this, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. It's not that solid. So grab the hands here. Here we go. Okay, we'll come in position. We need to create a little space to put my hook in here. What you can do is just cross face them. Cross face them to the side. His mind will be here again. Cross face step in and go for this. This is a lock, an arm lock. You see when I set it up now, he's gonna tap. But we can do something more too. Make sure you not let the, this arm go. You really wanna keep holding to it. So I slide up so you can't pull it out. I grab this arm and I roll to this side. From here, I can elbow, elbow, punch, hammer fist, real good, but I would go for an elbow. Two elbows, and it's gonna be over. Once again, move around a little bit, do something. Palm strike him or cross face him. Cross face him, open this up here a little bit so you can step in and catch. Slide, you get the arm bar right here. Now you're going to jump over, grab this arm here, and hook it tight. Make sure this is tight, otherwise he's going to pull his arm out. And now you start elbowing him. The next one I'm going to do is kind of like this one. Watch my fight against Maurice Smith. That's the principle. We're gonna distract him up and we're gonna attack low. So we'll make him think you're going for an arm or something. What you do is really doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to be a hold. As long as you start pushing his arm or grabbing his wrist, people already think you're gonna do something with his arm. A good thing to do though is to try to bring his arm here. Because now he's gonna think you're gonna hammer lock him. And maybe you can finish him. When you wanna finish him like this now, the best thing for you to do is to grab these legs and bridge. Watch, I'm, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to pin his hip down. I'm going to slide. I'm going to pin his hip down all the way at bridge. And then I make the lock. It's only variation. It's not what we're going to do right now, but I just wanted to tell you guys. Because that's the way I am. The explaining guy. So anyway, I'm sitting here. He thinks something's going on with his arm. And now you're going to move fast. One, slide, slide. And go for the knee bar. Okay, go, we're gonna distract him with an armbar. I would do that because when somebody's in this position 
and he's got his leg here. I know he's probably going for a leg, especially when I start hitting him. This is like a total setup. When you move forward, you, you uh, replace your balance, you put your balance forward. It's, you make yourself difficult to go for a leg. Look, this is what I mean. When I do this, he will think, oh, he's going for an arm. All my weight is here. This is for me perfect to go for a knee bar. This is not that perfect. I can still do it, but he thinks I'm not. He thinks probably I'm going for his arm now. When you go for the arm, pin it on the ground as hard as you can, so he can't move. Because when I don't do it, and he stretches his arm now, he's out. Okay, so when I pin it to the ground, see, he cannot stretch it. Make sure it's all the way bent. If it's like this and I pin it, he will probably stretch it still. See, he's gonna get out. So make sure it's all the way bent, so he cannot generate any power. And pin it down. Go under it. Now he really thinks it's going on. And then we're gonna move. Come on. Another nice setup. This I use in training a lot. It's real fun. And you, it really works. You can distract somebody real bad. Look, I make a fist. I'm going to plant it here on this solar plexus. Then I'm going to put my body weight on it. Make sure your fist is tight. Because when it's loose and you're going to lay on it, see, it has no effect. You want to bury your knuckles into its plexus. The normal reaction of people, like the natural reaction is, and he will come up and I do this, and he will do that. That's a natural thing to do. And you will see in training, once you try it out, it's, it's gonna work. Okay, so this is what I'm doing. I'm hooking the legs. First of all, let's concentrate on this thing. When I do this, I'm gonna bridge and I'm gonna put all my weight on this fist. So I'm laying here. Watch, I'm not just laying like this, no. Watch, I'm bridging. You see? Even when his head is here, this is perfect. You don't wanna have it here. If it doesn't work like that, then it doesn't work. But he will come up a little bit at least. That's exactly the space you need to slide a choke in, a front choke. You slide it in with your hand, all the way flat. I'm gonna slide it in like this. On this side, you can see, this is, when this is his neck, I slide and my thumb is around here. Then my hand is gonna grab, so I'm like this. My hand is gonna grab, I'm gonna I'm gonna stretch out again and the choke is on. Now, we're gonna do everything together right now. I'm gonna make a fist and I'm doing this. Let me come. You see, I'm posting on my head. I do that because then I can open up here. When I don't do this, it's difficult for me for this hand to go under here. When I post on my head, you see, I can come up a little bit. I get some room and this hand can grab the other hand. I go back and I stretch. And that's the choke. Okay, the important things. Make a fist. Make the fist hard, otherwise it's not gonna work. Put all your body weight on the fist. So bridge totally. I will bridge when I do it like this. Watch what I do. I go all the way up. And I got his legs through. All the way up. Everything is down on this point. You will come up with his head. You slide it in. You go to your head. You create some space. So you let the legs go. You create some space to slip in with the right hand. Grab it and make the choke. Here we go. Fist. Go. Slide. Bring it face. Go back and reach.
Okay, what we go for here is an armbar. I'm going to set it up real good because an armbar, a lot of people know what to do to stop it. Remember in the video series tapes how to apply an armbar with the overhand grip, right to the right and left to the left. I'm going to do that too here. Okay, first of all, you want to have him on your side. You remember when he's laying like this, how to open his arms, huh? I'm going to smash a knee into his head. I'm going to lift it open. I'm going to go down and grab. What I'm doing now, right now, is I'm starting to slam my elbow down his ribs constantly. It will hurt him and it will annoy him and it takes the wind out of him. So, bam, bam, move and use all your body weight. Now you're going to knee him. You're going to knee him to the body. This is perfect because here's is the liver. His right side, so for you, when you stand up, your left hand is the liver. You don't want to get hit here too hard because you're going down. It's perfect. You start kneeing him there. There's nothing else for him to do than to block. So you take the hand away. What the hand's normally going to catch this leg when I step over. That's what I'm going to try to prevent now by kneeing him to the body. Boom. Boom. Put your foot down. And now I'm going to turn. Watch. Turn. Grab the overhand grip here. And I got the armbar, like I said, in the armbar tape. No expense. That's it. I won't take the wrist. Or when you have the hand like this, you can slide over and control the head very hard. When somebody's really strong, he will twist it and he will roll out. You don't want to have that. So I would just stay in this position. There's no way he's going to turn out right now. The only thing you do is bridge. And he will tap. Okay, what works also is this. When I'm going to hit him here, he probably will defend it. His arm will go there, you see? That's also good. Slip it in and grab it. Hold it tight. You're sitting here, you can knee him in the head. Knee him to the body, knee him to the body, knee him to the body. You're going to step over. Right to the right, left over and to the left. And that's the arm bar. That's it. I hope you like the combinations. I um, got them through years and years of experience and a lot of training, a lot of fighting. Uh, have a good training partner. It's really important to have a good training partner so you can train them. Don't just look at the tape and think you got it. It's not going to work. Okay, train and enjoy.